We already looked at how to paint assets to a screen. Now we're going to go look at the rest of screen settings. For starters, by default, a Nest Maker screen can be in four different states. Day, night, day triggered, and night triggered. Not all modules will make use of all these states. Some will only make use of day. It's important to note that as you place objects on your screen, you are doing so for the state that is selected from the drop-down menu. For this tutorial, we're just going to use day normal, and I recommend you work with day normal until you have a full handle on how the tool and the screen states work. Open screen info. In the screen info, you will see eight screen flags. Very similar to the monster flags, these are flags for the screen that can be defined and set by the user and whose behaviors will completely differ from module to module, game to game. For example, if you are making a dungeon crawler, you might use this first bit to create selected dark rooms, while a space shooter might use this first bit to designate this as a boss screen. How these might be used will wholly be dependent on how you want to use them and how they work with the underlying code. We will look more at how you can make use of them when we look at a little bit of coding. Generally, these will already be predefined and created in the genre modules. From there, advanced users can change them to suit their needs. They can be renamed in project setting labels under screen flags labels. On the right half of the dialog, there are certain settings that can apply to the game for different states. For instance, you can set the NPC dialog group for each potential state, and you can set the song that plays in each potential state. We have not discussed paths yet, but once you have established a path group, you can determine which path group this particular screen uses here. We will return to this in a future video when we do look at how to set up paths. The next section is for warp tiles. Here, you can set the starting position if the player warps from one screen to this one. And you can set the coordinates for the screen on the map that the player will jump to if he warps out of this screen. By checking warp out to underworld, the player will warp to those coordinates on the second map screen, the underworld. By not checking, the player will warp to those coordinates on the number one screen, the overworld. The screen speed is not yet relevant, however, it will control the speed of background tile animations. Screen type relates to how screen triggers work. When you set off a screen trigger, it will set all screens of the designated type to triggered. So, for instance, if you wanted to trigger all four screens to now be more difficult, you would set all four screens to the same type, say number seven, and use a trigger to trigger that number seven type. Then, when a player enters a screen that's set to screen type 7, it loads certain data based on whether this type of screen is triggered or not. It also loads corresponding monsters, which are represented here in the tabs at the top. For now, we're just going to focus on day monsters. You can determine whether you're loading the tile set from bank 0 or bank 1 and which tile set in that bank you'd like to use. The choices you have for monster groups are going to be completely dependent on those two options, as you'll only be able to select groups made with monsters from the selected tile set. This is where you're actually setting sub palettes 3 and 4, which the screen will use for monsters. The icons of the monsters will update to show what they will look like filtered through that sub palette. An important thing to note. No objects, not even game objects, can be placed on a screen unless a monster group is selected for that screen. They will all default to zero, and all objects will end up being player objects. If you notice that a player is showing up or a game object should, chances are you never set a monster group. Now that we have the screen set up, we can begin placing objects. Right click on the screen to bring up the placement menu. Besides placing the player, here you can edit monster placement, reset object placements, or place up to four individual objects. First, let's place monster one. As you hover your mouse over place monster one, you'll see that all of your game objects and all four of the monsters from your selected group are available for placement. You do not have to place monster type one in the monster one slot. These are just four object slots where you can place any of the available objects. Choose what you wish to place in this position. Next, right click somewhere else in the screen and select what you'd like to place as a second object. Let's take a look at the placement details by right clicking anywhere and choosing edit monster placement details. 
For each object, you have four possible methods of placement. If you have placed it manually, you will see placement details under Monster Placement. You can also place it using Random, which will randomly place this monster inside the monster spawn box area that you set up when you set up the HUD. This is great for making sure that random monsters don't spawn on the very edges of the screen where your player might appear when he appears on the screen. Notice, if you choose random, you can actually check the boxes underneath the placement type. These correspond to the object types in the monster group. If you check only the first one, only the first type in the group will be able to spawn. If you check, say, two and three, a random monster will be either two or three. If you select them all, any of the monsters in the monster group could conceivably spawn in this position. You can do the same thing with edge type placement. Edge spawners work with the global game timer code. If edge is selected, monsters will spawn randomly at the edge when the global game timer goes off. Lastly, you can completely disable placements altogether by choosing disable. To the right, you can see the current loaded text group for this screen, and in the subsequent boxes, you'll see the dialogue that would be associated if that object was an NPC type. This is a module-specific feature, and even though all modules will show this information, only select modules will actually make use of this information. Hopefully this video has given you some insight in how to finish setting up screens and how to place game objects in your game.